Welcome back to Aggie Sports Overtime. Every week this summer, we are going to talk about the upcoming SEC football season. Today, we begin our tour around the SEC with the Auburn Tigers. Here to talk about the Tigers team is Derek Steyer, a sports anchor for WSFA, the NBC affiliate in Montgomery, Alabama. First of all, Derek, thanks for joining us today. Oh, absolutely, Luke. Uh, look forward to it. Now, first, Auburn, obviously the big story, has a new head coach in Gus Malzahn, who takes over for Gene Chizik. How do you think Malzahn is fitting in after watching him work with the team during the spring? Well, I think he's, he's fit in extremely well just because of the familiarity that he has with the program, Luke. You know, he was a, an offensive coordinator here at Auburn three years prior to leaving and taking the head coaching job at Arkansas State. He's familiar with all the players. The players are familiar with him. Uh, he recruited a lot of them. Uh, the people loved his system when he was here as the offensive coordinator. And I'll tell you what, he has really reinvigorated this program just over the last few months. They had an outstanding spring practice an unbelievable spring a day record crowd i think it was a top five in the nation over 80,000 showed up uh, i think the previous record before that was like 35,000. so folks are really excited about auburn football now will that relate to wins this fall still a little bit early to tell there you talked about those players having that familiarity at least a little bit one thing coach chiswick did do well was recruit i mean auburn's classes were very good as far as recruiting there's a lot of talk about how he didn't get the most out of those recruits as their careers progressed i mean do you see that as one of malzahn's i guess top duties to get the most out of those players that auburn has been able to bring in you're absolutely right, Luke. That was the one biggest thing, I think, that the, the knock against Gene Chizik was player development. He just did not send these players on to the next level because, as you mentioned, top five recruiting class year in and year out, and for some reason it didn't relate onto the field. And I think that's something that Gus Malzahn will do. He had great, uh, a, a great way of, of getting Chris Todd back in 2009. This is a, a guy that's not a super quarterback, but, but did a fantastic job with him in developing his game and skill set to what they needed to do on the field. And I think that's the biggest thing that he's going to bring in, uh, especially with the quarterbacks. Uh, he knows how to uh, coach quarterback, and I think he will be able to, to, to raise their game, take their level, and, and, and really uh, you know, enhance this team and, and, and develop them. Because that's the biggest thing right now. You see what Nick Saban is doing at Alabama. He's taking his players, developing them, sending them off to the NFL. That's exactly what these guys want to do at Auburn as well. Since you mentioned the quarterbacks, why don't we start there offensively? There's sure. a quarterback battle, it seemed, that was going on enter, entering the spring. Do you see that still as a battle heading into the beginning of fall? And kind of how do you see that playing out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this competition is going to go all the way right up until probably week one. You only had two scholarship quarterbacks going head to head in spring practice. Kyle Frazier and Jonathan Wallace both have some experience, but none have had a whole lot of success uh, last year. You've got three incoming quarterbacks coming in this fall. Jeremy Johnson, highly touted recruit from right here in Montgomery. You've also got Jason Smith and then a junior college kid named Nick Marshall. Uh, some folks believe that, that Johnson will, will, will redshirt. Uh, Jason Smith will likely move to another position. He's so athletic, uh, and it could be a three-headed horse between Marshall, uh, Kyle Frazier, and Jonathan Wallace. Um, neither did a whole lot during the spring to really separate themselves. I think they like Nick Marshall um, because of his experience in the junior college ranks, uh, but he did throw a lot of interceptions there. So that's one thing Gus Malzahn doesn't like. He doesn't like a quarterback that turns the ball over. So I think this is going to be a very uh, heated up competition this fall and, and one that we're all going to have our eyes on. Now, how about on the defensive side of the ball? It seems the defensive backfield is going to be the strength of this team. That's where the majority of those players come back. How big is it having a DB group like it is, especially with some of the teams that are offensive, you know, minded like Texas A&M, Alabama and those sorts of teams over there in the SEC West. Well, I think it's it's absolutely huge that that's where you have a, a more of your upperclassmen uh, in the defensive backfield. And I think that they're going to have to be the guys that uh, that really lead this defense. Look, Auburn's not going to outscore a lot of opponents this year. Their defense is going to have to keep a minute. And uh, one player to really watch this year is Justin Garrett. He had an unbelievable spring at the new star position. Ellis Johnson, the new defensive coordinator, bringing in a 4-2-5 defense. And uh, he had a fantastic uh, spring. Uh, star is kind of like that hybrid uh, safety and linebacker position. Uh, Gus Malzahn mentioned over and over in the spring that he really set the tone for the defense. So I think they're really going to rely on those guys in that backfield. Uh, linebackers don't have a whole lot of depth. 
Uh, they do have a couple of good players there, uh, but they really need to get a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out of that defensive, you know, front, the, the front four. Um, they have to get pressure on the quarterback, something that they didn't do a whole lot of last year. If those guys can put some pressure on the quarterback and, and, and really hit some contact at, at the point of scrimmage, the line of contact, I think uh, that's going to be huge for them uh, so that it can take some of the pressure off of the linebackers. Now, looking at the schedule, it sets up pretty tough for Auburn this year. Five of the Tigers' last six games against A&M, Arkansas, Tennessee, and then you've got to finish with Georgia and Alabama. How right. important is a good start for this team? I mean, you don't want to put too much pressure on them early, but, I mean, these guys are going to have to get it done pretty quick. You're absolutely right. I mean, look, the expectations are pretty low for this Auburn team already. I mean, they went 3-9 and nine last year. Um, the good start is key because I think – when you look at their schedule, you have to believe that they're going to win the non-conference games. That's Washington State, Arkansas State, Western Carolina, and Florida Atlantic. So there's four wins there. Uh, as you mentioned on the back end, Georgia, Alabama, Texas A&M, and LSU. Just looking at it right now, I have to look at them as losses. So you've got the four swing games in the middle there. Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Now Mississippi State, Ole Miss are at home. You have to hope that they can, they can you know, protect Jordan-Hare Stadium and win those Tennessee and Arkansas are swing games. I think those are the key. I think if this team can win seven games in the regular season, then go on to win a bowl game, I think it would be a tremendously successful season. Um, so as you mentioned, getting off to that fast start is key because if they don't, then boy, they're going to have a, a tough time at the end of that schedule. Now the Tigers will visit Aggieland October 19th. Derek, thanks so much for joining us this week and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. Absolutely. You guys as well. Look forward to the games this fall.